Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at uh, what the transform greatest integer function looks like. Now that we've had experience with the basic function, let's look at how to tweak this function. So in today's subtitle, please put down transform greatest integer function. The greatest integer has the following format. The transform greatest integer function will always have the following format. It's always f of x is equal to a multiplied by the greatest integer of b multiplied by x minus h. And then, outside of the greatest integer function, you have a plus k. For the first time, you're seeing a variable b. Now, each one of these variables, a, b, h, and k, tweak the greatest integer function in certain ways. We'll be looking at how they transform the function in today's lesson. The value of a, believe it or not, does the same thing as in a parabola. Namely, the value a causes some stretching to happen. So the larger the a value, the taller the graph is going to look like. Next, the value of b is actually quite intriguing. The value b does this. It reveals if the steps have a closed point on the left and an open point on the right, or it could also reveal to you if it's open on the left and closed on the right. We're going to look at this in closer detail in a few moments. And finally, the value of h and k together are actually quite interesting too. Together, they will reveal the first closed point on the graph. Let's take a closer look at each of these variables in action. Let's start with the variable a first. Well, we know that a will cause stretching in the graph, so the graph will get taller or shorter based on what a is. But how does it do that? Easy. It does that by playing around with the counter step height. So in your notebook, please put counter step height. Now, how does it do this? Easy. The counter step height can be calculated by taking, and this is going to be new to you, the absolute value of A. The expression absolute value of A is written with the letter A surrounded by two tall straight line brackets. Now, for the time being, you don't need to understand what absolute value means. All you have to know is what it does. So let's put a little side note. The absolute value of A means you simply take the positive version of A. So if you find that A is negative 2, then the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And if the number was already positive, then simply stays positive. This is actually a function that you'll be studying more in detail in a later grade. For now, I just want you to understand what it does. Now let's take a look at what b does. b actually serves a very important function also. Whereas a reveals the spacing in between each step, the variable b reveals how long each step is. And as you can recall, that is called the step length. So in your notebook, please put down step length. Now how does it reveal this? Actually a really simple calculation. The so step length can be calculated by doing the following. It's 1 divided by the, and again, this function is going to come back into play, absolute value of b. And again, I don't need you to know how, what absolute value means. I just need you to know that the absolute value of b will take whatever b is and use its positive version. First step, we are dividing by b this time. Now, since we are dividing by b, logic would dictate the following. As b gets bigger, that means we end up dividing 1 by a bigger number, it causes the steps to actually get shorter. 
we're going to see the impact of this when we graph it a few times. Now, that's not all for B, though. B actually has another very important effect on the graph. As we looked at the transform version of the function on top, I mentioned that B reveals whether it's going to be closed at the left of the step or on the right of the step. Well, how does it do this? It's very easy to remember that the steps will be closed on the left and open on the right if the value of B is positive or the steps will be open on the left and closed on the right if B is negative. We've looked at what A does by itself and what the variable B does by itself. But here's an extra complication to this particular function. The complication is that A and B together also have an impact on what this graph can look like. What determines if the steps proceed upstairs or if they proceed downstairs? In other words, an upwards sloping staircase or a downwards sloping staircase? Well, it's the A times B combination that does that. It does it in the following manner. If you multiply A and B together and you give a positive answer, then it means that the steps are proceeding in an upstairs manner. However, if you multiply A and B together and it gives you a negative result, it means that the steps form a downwards sloping staircase. So that is the extra added complication of having to look at A and B together, not just individually. The final thing we'd like to look at is the impact of the H and the K. As we noted earlier in the notes, H and K together reveal the first closed point of the graph. All right. Now, with all this information, you actually have more than enough information to draw a proper step function. So let's take a look at that next. I would like you to put example. Suppose I ask you to draw the following graph. Draw f of x is equal to, uh, how about this one? 2 multiplied by the greatest integer of 1 over 3 times x minus 1. Close the greatest integer. And then the k is on the outside. Let's make that plus 3. Because this is your first time looking at such a graph, let's clearly identify all our variables. We have our variable a right here. So a equals 2. We have the variable b inside the greatest integer function. Let's identify that as 1 over 3. We have our value h inside the bracket next to the x. That is 1. Be very careful here. Watch out for the subtraction danger. And we have the k outside all by itself. In this case, like usual, what you see is what you get with the letter k. And that is positive 3. Now let's get the easiest analysis out of the way, the h and k. The h and k reveal, will reveal our first closed point on the graph. So let's put that down. Our first our first close point, according to our H and K, will be located at 1 and 3. All right. Next, let's take a look at the spacing in between each step. And don't forget that is called our counter step height. Now the counter step height is calculated by doing the absolute value of whatever a is. In this case, our variable is equal to 2. So that means it's the absolute value of 2. And again, absolute value means 
you want to take the positive version of the number in between those two lines. In this case, it's already a positive 2, so we simply keep it positive. This tells us that the spacing in between each step is going to be 2 units big. Now let's take a look at how long each step is going to be. And don't forget, that is known as the step length. The step length is calculated with the following. It's 1 divided by the absolute value of b. Well, from our formula, we see that the value of b is equal to 1 third. So it's 1 divided by the absolute value of 1 third. Now, since the 1 third is already positive, then the absolute value of 1 third will simply give me 1 third. So it's 1 divided by 1 third. And 1 divided by 1 third gives me a value of 3. So now we know that each step is going to be 3 units long. Let's figure out whether this is going to be an upwards sloping staircase or a downwards sloping staircase. And to figure that out, we have to look at A and B together. Well, if you look at the value of A, which is positive 2, and the value of B, which is positive 1 third, when we do A multiplied by B, that's going to give us a positive result. And if the A times B together gives a positive result, that means we are going to have an upwards sloping staircase. The final thing that we'd like to make a note of is whether the steps will be closed on the left or closed on the right. And it's the value of B that reveals that. Well, take a look. Our B is positive one third. So, since B is positive, that means that our steps will be closed on the left and open on the right. Now, believe it or not, with all the information we have in front of us right now, we have enough to complete our first graph. Pause the video and prepare a grid that has the following size. You'll probably need a good amount of room for this. So go ahead, pause the video, and prepare it now. With the grid ready to go, let's put down some of our information. I always put down H and K first. So H and K represents our first closed point, and that's located at 1 and 3. So let's put that down. At 1 and 3 will be our first closed point. Perfect. Next, let's look at how the value of B helps us draw the rest of the step. I want to look at this piece of information right here, the step length, and this piece of information right here whether it's open on the right or open on the left. Well, together, they actually help you complete the step. You know that the step is going to be three units long. And you know that it's going to be an open point to the right of the step. This tells you that three units later, so the x-coordinate of the first black point is one, that makes three units later the x-coordinate will be four. And it also tells you that that's going to be an open point. And therefore, together, that information helps you complete your first step. Let's take a look at how all the information corresponds. The step length is 3. That's given by this piece of information right here. It's close on the left, open on the right, and that's given by this piece of information right here. And our H and K reveal to us the first close point. So that gives us our first step. Now let's take a look at how to form the other steps. And the two pieces of information that are going to help us are the counter step height and whether it's going upstairs or downstairs. Well, the counter step height tells us that 
the next step will be separated from this step by two units. So it could either occur at y equals 5 or it could occur at y equals 1 because those two locations are two units from that step. But the question is, which one should it be? Well, that's where the knowledge of whether it's increasing or decreasing will help us. We know that because a times b is positive, it's going to be an upstairs kind of function. So we know that it has to occur in this spot right here and not this the lower spot. Because if it occurred in the lower spot, it would give us a downstairs type of graph. So it's not going to be here. It's going to be up here. And once you've determined where the next step shows up, it's just a matter of repeating the first step. So close point is on the left. The open point is three units later because the step length is three. And that will give us our second step. Once you have two steps, every other step falls into place very easily. Let's put down a few more to the left of our first step. So we know that the counter step height is 2. So that makes the second step over here. And remember, it's open on the right and closed on the left in this particular example. And three units long will make the this step show up over here. So that's another step that we can put. And let's just do one more. How about another step below that? So two units below that. Our open point is on the right. And our close point is three units later, right about there. And there you have it. Thanks to all the information we found through our analysis, we can draw a pretty decent graph with it.